So last year, I decided I'll no longer be uploading videos for the remainder of 2020. I knew that, you know, this is what I wanted, as the weight of the events of said year are already holding me down, so I needed to take a break to get myself together, along with what I wanted to do for 2021. What I didn't know was that my Wi-Fi was going to be out from October to January. And the insult to injury was that I didn't even have a working phone throughout this time, so I sat every day with no connection to friends, favorite YouTube videos, favorite online games, zip. However, it was actually a pretty fun three months in hindsight. Internet truly isn't everything, and while the things that I want to do in the future revolve around the interwebs, it's nice to take some time off to appreciate the things that you do have. Before this intro gets too sentimental, I'm going to be listing off all the things I did to just share my experience with you guys as kind of a refresher to ease back into YouTubing again, because there is a lot of things that I did. One thing that some of you might not know is that I finally got a Switch, and with said Switch, I got a game that I've been dying to play ever since it came out. Fortnite for Switch! You'd be surprised how many dumps I've gotten on Switch compared to on PC, probably considering the demographic of Fortnite Switch players is from age 5 to like 13. Okay, but for real though, Animal Crossing New Horizons was worth all of the wait. Every hour I poured into this game made the entire struggle worth it, and I mean every every single hour. I won't mention I played the game months before my Wi-Fi went out, but it wasn't until my Wi-Fi went out that I started racking up a lot of playtime. This game comes in clutch when you're bored and alone and want to find ways to humor yourself and find things to do around your island. There is a myriad of things to collect, and I'm on the road to also collecting every bug, fish, and art piece I can find. Not to, uh, not to brag, but I've already collected all the fossils. This game will definitely go down as my game of the year for 2020. I can't help it. I've made so many memories on this game, and even though it's sometimes the game can get harder and harder to pick back up, it's the type of game that pays off to all your hard work and creativity. Even if you're not a creative person, Animal Crossing will find a way to bring it out of you. 9 out of 10. Yeah, I'm... I'm doing uh I'm doing ranking number I'm doing numbers now, rankings now, so that's my thing. Also, it's been pretty hard to play this game without music, and I didn't have much offline music to begin with. At some point I had to start singing my own music. Big chungus, big no, chungus, not that one! God, you guys are never gonna let me live that down. Luckily I was able to come over to my mother's place a few times, allowing me to leech off of her Wi-Fi to download videos, music, and games to stave off my boredom for when I get home. I've listened to a lot of good music, as well as experimenting with new music. And as you know, I can't talk about music without talking about K-pop. <laughs> yep, yeah, there it is. There it is. Uh, go ahead and click off this video. I, I, I can't stop you. As some of you may know, for better or for worse, I listen to a lot of K-pop. Mostly Twice and other girl groups such as WJSN. Yeah, I, got, I think I got that right. And Luna. The groups that really shined through during this no Wi-Fi pandemic, however, was Red Velvet. They have a lot of Korean pop songs and they're just... A, a, a discography, of course. It's called K-pop for a reason, but there's a lot of songs that are just filled to the brim with jazzy R&B inspiration. I'm so sad I haven't listened to their music sooner. I respect any opinion you have on K-pop. I know it's not a lot of people's cup of tea, but I really think you should give K-pop music a few more listens, especially for a group as musically diverse as Red Velvet. Get it. Also, I really need a lot more friends to listen to K-pop. Most of my friends that don't like it or don't listen to it, and none of my Twice memes make sense to any of them. Speaking of things that don't make sense, I've played a lot of Minecraft. It's this little indie game, you probably haven't heard of it. More specifically, a Minecraft mod pack. Whenever I had short access to Wi-Fi, I downloaded a mod pack from the Technic launcher called Dragon Wilderness Reborn. This was the pack... This was the pack, okay. This was just a pack of Minecraft mods to make the game more dragony and wildernessy. And boy, did I play the shit out of this game, man. There is so much in this mod, you have no idea. I have this house that pretty much has a room for every mod in the game. There's a shit ton of new animals that you can farm and tame, and dastardly mobs that you gotta watch out for. There's even factions and tribes in other villages filled with player-like mobs. Some good, most bad, though. There's, there's no telling how many people I've slaughtered and how many lands I've conquered in this world. Yellow tape around his body Yeah, 
There's an insane amount of different items and crafting recipes for blocks, weapons, the works. There's a mod in here that just puts a ton of swords from other video games into Minecraft. Just a, just a bunch of swords. There's the Keyblade from Kingdom Hearts, the Master Sword from The Legend of Zelda, even Chrom Sword from that sword anime game called Super Smash Bros. And don't even get me started on the goddamn cooking. There is a mod in this pack that has a shit ton of ingredients to make even more types of dishes. So much that I could make a whole cooking show solely off of this mod alone. Alright guys, welcome to the Steffi Chefy Cook Show. Today we're going to go for a fairly easy and fairly simple recipe I like to call tacos. For this recipe, we're going to need some cooked beef, lettuce, cheese, a tortilla, and a cutting board. By that, I mean we're going to need the cutting board to make this stuff. We won't actually eat the cutting board. That's, that's dangerous. <laughs> And let's just jump right into it. Alright, we don't actually have tortillas on us, so we gotta make the tortilla. So we will need cornmeal, a skillet, and some water. But we don't have cornmeal, so we gotta make our own so that we can make the tortillas to make tacos. Grab your mortar and pestle that you have right beside of you, get you some corn, and grind you some cornmeal. Yes, this is how cornmeal is made, trust me. Grab your skillet, cornmeal, and water, and finally roll you some tortillas. So now that we have that, we're gonna need some lettuce, but we don't have lettuce on us, obviously, so go down by the village and grab some freshly grown lettuce, and buy some, I mean, a lot. What do you think? We're gonna make, like, one or two tacos, really? Now we're gonna need some juicy beef to throw in that shit, but we don't have steak on us, so we gotta go out to the cow farm and commit cow massacre with your fire aspect murder sword to grab some freshly cooked steak. Yellow tape around his body, some fucking homicide. Make sure to reproduce them for future meat grabbing. I should have put a trigger warning for vegans. This this video is just messed up already. And then the most important part, the cheese. Now finally assembled your hard-earned ingredients, and bam, we got ourselves some epic tacos. And I can't even eat them because I'm not hungry. Okay. All right, all right. I've wasted enough time on this mod. I think we should move on before this video just becomes a dream SMP. But first. I haven't even gotten to show you guys how I make weapons and armor in this game. Alright, so today we're going to be making a sword entirely out of emerald, specifically a rapier, because we can do that, and also rapiers remind me of that one dude from the princess movie. For this, we gotta individually make the tool rod, the sword blade, and the cross guard. But before we do that, we need to make a stencil, because before we can make the parts, we have to make the gold mold for the parts, so we will craft cobblestone parts so that we can shape the gold mold. After we have crafted the cobblestone parts, throw them onto the forge and pour the hot liquid gold onto it in order to make the gold mold. Once you have all three molds, we can finally switch the forge from molten gold to molten emerald. Pour the emerald into the, uh, uh, uh what's it called? Oh yeah! Gold! So that we have the emerald tool rod, sword blade, and cross guard. And now finally, and very satisfyingly, put all three pieces in order on the tool forge to finally create our very own highly anticipated emerald rapier. But it's a very weak weapon, especially compared to my current one, but oh, I'll keep it in my sword's chest and remember it forever. What was this video about again? Maybe a bit of light spending will jog my memory. Which brings us to today's sponsor. My girlfriend, Lilypad Styles, is a shop on Etsy filled to the brim with some fresh frog drip. If you like frogs, this place is basically heaven. If you're a morning person, you might like this frog coffee mug. He's touching Jesus. Or you might like this frog gang hoodie, which is a reference to how if you buy anything from the shop, you will turn into a frog. <laughs> There's also a lot of non-frog stuff, such as the Chill Vibes hat, or the Can of Cloud sticker. I mean, come on! Even Megamind couldn't think of something like that. Did you know that the Can of Clouds actually exists in real life? Just like how frogs exist in real life? Not to mention the variety of vibrant colors you can choose from, as well as making sure you get the right size for you. This is also perfect for Valentine's Day, as a special day is coming up, ooh. So if you want to be absolutely fake, Make sure to hop on down to Lilypad Styles, link is in the description. Give my girlfriend your money and I will give you a hug. Alright, where was I? Oh yeah, I was talking about Minecraft. I'm also working on something Minecraft related, except this isn't about the Minecraft mod, thank god. It's going to be a Zelda based adventure map and it's currently under development. I started working on it when I had no Wi-Fi and I'm still working on it. I'm also working on my Stephenio Chronicle album still, so there's that. Uh, okay, let's talk about games again. For Christmas, I got The Witcher 3 for the Nintendo Switch, but it wouldn't let me record the footage for The Witcher 3, so uh, just trust me when I say it's, you know, it's, it's uh, definitely a game. 
It's The Witcher 3. It came out like six years ago. But what I did get footage of, thankfully, is Hades. This is by far one of the hardest games I've ever played. Even harder than RL Craft. How do, how do I keep going back to Minecraft? This game is very challenging at first. You'll have next to nothing at the beginning, but you very slowly start to get more and more as you proceed through the story and character developments, ending up with you coming on top with really fun and wacky weapon and ability combinations, which always leads to satisfying playthroughs that always differ than the last. You'd think the game would get repetitive since the core gameplay is getting through the same four areas over and over, but it's always surprisingly refreshing each time. It makes it to where you want to try different boon and weapon combinations to see how much havoc you can wreck. Eventually, once you actually beat Hades, the game will feel a lot easier until you use the Packs of Punishment which basically make the game much harder, but allow you to get more loot because of it, and holy shit, these packs can get fucking insane. Like, what even is this? What What am I looking at? What, what is happening here? What, why, is there, why is there so many? They keep appearing. They won't stop appearing. Why is there so many? Is this a joke? This game is a joke. 9 out of 10. Alright, alright, I just need to wind down and play an easier game. A game that I somehow always come back to every single year. Honestly, I have no jokes written for this segment. Let's just talk about this game for a minute. Super Mario 64 is one of the first games I've ever played. I've played it ever since I learned how to play video games and I somehow haven't achieved 120 stars until a few weeks ago. Even though I've experienced everything I can possibly experience in the game, all the secrets, all the shortcuts, all the tips and tricks, this game is still so much fun to revisit. There's not much else to say about Super Mario 64 in general, but like the game itself, it's fun to keep going anyways. The heartfelt levels, the immersive music, the spectacle of every secret in the game, it all makes for such a wonderful masterpiece that has a big name in video gaming as a whole, and rightfully so. I think I've proved my point, this game is truly bigger than life. For the final thing I did without internet, I'm going to jump from a game I've played almost all my life to a game I've never played up until now. Nights into Dreams. Now, I've been a fan of the Obscure Nights franchise for a while. I had the sequel when I was a kid, but I never got to play the original. I can see why this game never got to be as big as it should have been. It's not the most optimized game, the visuals are rough around the edges, and it has some pretty tough competition. Oh hey, it's Mario 64. Go figure. The best thing I can say about the gameplay though is that it has the most fluid movement of, out of any game I've played. You'd be surprised how much went into the flying mechanic in this game, so much so that Sega had to make a new controller for the Sega Saturn just so you could play this game how it's meant to be played. While I played it on the emulator, it was still so responsive and, like, floaty. The premise of the gameplay is making your rounds, flying through rings, collecting chips, and proceeding to the next area, and yet, it feels so rewarding to do such minute things. The music is really good, and the character design of Knights himself is really iconic to me. I don't know why. I wish Sega didn't drop this series so hard just to make more Sonic games. I think the Knights series could have had a chance to be more recognized if they just stuck by it a little bit more, fixed up the story and the gameplay mechanics, and made it much more accessible to people. 7 out of 10. And that's pretty much all I did while I was gone. I hope I didn't worry anyone too much. I'm going to be YouTubing again with some fresh new experiences. I might make more meme videos. I know the public really likes that for some reason. I have a Smash Ultimate video cooking up here real soon. And some other games that I own and want to do some gameplay videos on. 2021 will already be one of my most busiest years ever, with me moving into a new apartment this summer and having a part-time job at some point. Juggling YouTube won't be as easy as it used to be, but I'll at least have enough content to actually make an annual compilation this year, unlike last year where I had four videos and just said... And also, I'm changing my epic catchphrase from Frappuccino to Cappuccino. 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 Cappuccino.